Okay, come on. We're going to go have some fun. Well, I'm holding wine. Yep. Let's go check our soil meter. All are right. You, are you ready? I'm ready. ready. Woo! Going past the chicken coop over here. And we've got our little Syrah vineyard that I've got to get out and get those vines up and going. Boom. Ready, 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 ready. Woo! So then in the mornings, we'll come and check the water. We actually really come out and check the water through this ATV. I'll take you to where our water, how I have to turn on the water every morning, and then we'll check the soil meter. Okay, hold on. Ready? Woo! 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 Where is she? <laughs> ah, she's here. Let's go. <laughs> Today we're here with Carrie Hazen at Rancho Roble Vineyards in beautiful Lincoln, California. And we're here in her vineyard with all of these beautiful vines growing Barbera grapes and making it into beautiful wine. That's quite tasty too, isn't it? it? Yeah, we, just, awesome. we just had all of our vines pruned. So this is really exciting because we're going to test the soil, I hear, when we're just starting to at grow season. Oh, perfect. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out the Zynex soil moat sensor. And what this sensor does is you plug it into the soil, it has a little probe, and you put it down a couple of inches, and then it will report back to you on your phone and will tell you how moist the soil is. Oh, that's great. You know, in California we have droughts and we have issues. We try to really be cognizant about how much water we give our grapes. Um, actually, you want to stress your grapes out. So testing the soil and knowing the moisture in it would make a huge difference for me. I have to manually, now get up every morning, go down there about a half a mile, turn on the water, turn off the water, move a switch, move that. So to have some com something convenient in my pocket would be fabulous. Awesome. Well, let's try it out. Okay. Cheers. This is one of the largest regions in the world for Barbera grape. It's um, from the region comes, the, bar, the grapes come from the region of Piedmont, Italy, which is on the northern part of, of Italy, northeastern, where it um, backs up to Switzerland. Oh, cool. So it's real cold up there? Yeah, it is. But believe it or not, um, the Barbera grapes really, really thrive in heat. So Carrie, tell me about the winery. How did you get started? My husband and I fell in love with um, Barbera wine in the Placer County region and we started looking for a rural property and I absolutely fell in love with Rancho Robo Vineyards. It is gorgeous. It was a turnkey business and then it came with some amazing wine and it already had its own winemaker. So that was a big piece on why we um, decided to start a winery here. And we have owned the winery for three years and two months. <laughs> and that is when we have started our, our whole entire venture. We take care of the grapes very, very carefully, Val, because uh, as I mentioned before, we are farmers and you do a lot of watering. We just went through prune season. Then we will um, work on thinning. So we don't want to have too much fruit. We want to have great quality fruit. Less sometimes is much more. And this rosé is really delicious. Isn't it? So it's a Barbera rosé. One of the interesting things with um, Barbera is if you keep it on the skins for a, a short period of time, you're going to get that fruit forwardness in it, but you still get this beautiful pink color. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite wines that we have here at Rancho. I think the moisture meter is really going to help me by helping me become more efficient. So it's going to help me strategically think about the areas of my vineyard. How do I get moisture to it? And how do I continue to check it and use data to help me become a better grower? Okay, so here we go. We've um, placed your soil moat over there in the, in the soil. And right now this is giving you this reading. It's 31.1%. And that's on a scale of 0 to 100. So it's about 30% moist right now and what this does is it shows you um, and it'll report it over time so you get this graph so we just put it in right so 
but before when it was sitting over there it was zero and we put it in probably about here and now it's registered and kind of leveled off so you can see that it took a while for it to get to figure out exactly how moist it was and now it's leveled off at 31 percent yeah it didn't take that long though because i'm looking at yeah. 10 minutes which is pretty quick yeah i think what would be interesting and this is something that i've really actually struggled with is understanding do i get the same moisture in this part of the vineyard and we call this vineyard number one as in vineyard number two or three i know certain areas that i have less um, development of my grapes that i really might want to go in deeper and i think i'd like to track this over time because my guess is in the middle area because it's flat as well if you notice a lot of vineyards are on a slope um, i'm really struggling with the production level that I feel that my grapes should produce. So could we take the soil meter and take it over to another area? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. Okay, let's go. Let's take our wine with us, the girlfriend. Val, when we're looking at watering, it's it's amazing. There's like, um, UC Davis has a wine and grape growing institute, and they talk about a lot of growers look at May 1st till harvest, okay? May 1st is the magic number. But what we're finding is data, such as what we're finding with the soil meter, will allow you to really reevaluate on when you do start watering. So where are we gonna put the soil Let's mode? try this one, this looks good, this area. So see, this is our middle range right here from where our water goes in. Do you wanna hold this piece? Sure. And then I know I need to keep it two inches away. Now one thing I had suggested, and I'll see it's even harder, I think that a probe would need to be somewhat longer because my roots are going to be deeper. Yeah. But I do think this would give me a, a nice indicator and what I'd like to see is how close the percentage is in this area as in area number one. 23%. All right, it's 23%. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. So. But look too, you can set your low and your high. Um, dry alert, so I like that. Mine would be probably within five points. Yeah, so you can see if there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. Let's see how this goes throughout the whole um, growing season. Awesome. Well, let's move it around so we can see how your other vineyard's doing. Let's do it. Look how easy. I like this. All right. This is where our water tank is way out here. So you see, every day what I have to do is I have to go turn on the water, then I have to guesstimate how much water to get. So the next thing I want to ask my home to do is to help us how to digitalize and make this a lot more productive. Can you make that, can you make my life easier? I hope so. I'd like to spend more time drinking and less time having to worry about it. So how does it happen that you get the wine and I have the probe? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you're the farmer and I'm the drinker. That's true. So we're gonna hit this um, vineyard number one, which is our highest producing vineyard. Um, over the last years, it just continues to provide about 40% of what all three vineyards um, are producing. So I'm interested in seeing what the moisture level is. And this seems even drier than the other vineyard, so I can't wait to see what happens. Um, we'll move the sensor up. And I love that you said that it's waterproof and windproof. And it's already changed. Oh, it's going up? It's going up. It's already up to 35.3. That can't be right. That's crazy. It seems a lot, it's a lot higher than yeah, the first Yeah, because it was 31% in the vineyard number one. So this is vineyard number two. That's been your number three. So, I mean, this is very interesting. If it's accurate, it's going to tell me a lot. Cool. It's true. You, you know what's crazy is our grapes are huge and I mean, we get so many tons just from this vineyard. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, this okay, gives you a re some of the reason why. I know. I'm super excited because now we have the temperature sensor. And this is so important for wine. We wanna keep it at 58 degrees and holding. We don't want any variation in our wine. This is where we store our wine, we label our wine, we bottle, we capsule, and we most importantly want our wine to stay at this consistent temperature. So I'm very excited to, to find out how this works because we do have power outages here. We are off the grid. Um, it's going to be able to tell me we have all our inventory in that barn 
And so it's going to say, hey, your temperature is starting to rise. It could let me know ahead of time. Um, we did have this last year where a coil went out on our refrigeration unit. Oh, wow. Had I not gone in, we would um, really have a problem. So it will help us protect the inventory and have it right in my back pocket. Yep. So this is the sensor that they've been using to keep track of the temperature and humidity here in the room. And this is great, but you have to come in the room to see what the temperature is. Uh, with the thermo, uh, it does measure every now and then, and then you can see the impact over time on this graph. So you can set the set points on your thermo, so you can tell when it's too low, when it's too high, and you can define those yourself. Right now this is set at 10 and 103. We can change that so it's more appropriate to keep the wine here at the consistent temperature. And then how's the temp looking in the, in okay. the wine barn? Okay, so now it's, uh, the temperature is already down to 66.2 and it's still coming down. I mean, the thing that I'm impressed by is we've been thinking about, in fact, I had a, comp uh, a neighbor the other day who just reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to take care of our Syrah vineyard? Well, that's three miles away. If I could use the soil meter to check what the water looks like there, it's gonna reduce the number of times that I have to drive over to check that vineyard. Since Carrie's vineyards are out of the range of her Wi-Fi, we use a technology built into the thermo and soil moat called LoRaWAN. LoRaWAN allows the devices to be located far away, typically two miles or more from a LoRaWAN gateway. You can use any LoRaWAN gateway, such as this one from Zynect. Just change the thermo or soil moat app setup to use LoRaWAN. Uh, Carrie, thank you so much for hosting us today. This was really fun to test these sensors out in your vineyard. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I think we should just keep coming back. What do you guys think? Definitely, as long as you bring the wine. Absolutely. Cheers. We'll bring the grapes. So thanks for watching our video today. We've included more information about the products in the description box below. And while you're there, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you can find out the next time we do a new video. And for more smart home stories, visit appmyhome.com at myhome.com. Check out Val. She is the winner. Boom. Thank you. Yes. Soil meter goes down. Do, 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 do. Boom. <laughs>